This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be continuing our work with ellipses to um, create things like planetary orbits and other, um, other features that would use an ellipse shape. Uh, but I want to kind of optimize our system a little bit. Right now we have a system that kind of takes this theoretical ellipse and then we'll find a set number of vertices around it so that we can render it using a line renderer. And that worked for kind of just showing the idea of the ellipse, but it's not very useful in most of the cases that we want. Instead, what I want to do is I want to be able to kind of have this theoretical ellipse and kind of be able to put in a number between zero and one that is kind of the progress around the ellipse and then be able to have a function or a method um, kind of circumnavigate around the ellipse, find that point, and then return to us a vector three that is the position that we need. We can actually use this for our ellipse renderer and actually make that a little bit more efficient. Um, but in addition, this is gonna be useful for things like if we have a planet orbiting around um, you know, a star, we don't need to know every single point of the uh, ellipse itself, we just need to know the point where the planet currently is. So it'd be nice to be able to kind of just pass in, here's how far I am along the orbit, what position should I be at? So let's do this by uh, creating actually an ellipse class that's going to be able to store our ellipse parameters and then be able to return this information whenever we need it. Um, and so let's jump into Unity and get started. So back in our Unity project, the first thing I want to do is actually get um, change the name of this ellipse class to um, be ellipse renderer, because that's really what it's doing is it's taking some ellipse information and rendering it. Whereas I'm going to make an actual ellipse class that's going to store this information and be able to kind of um, evaluate positions for us. So we're going to open this up in MonoDevelop, and down here I'm going to right click and say refactor and rename um, this class and you'll see here that it also will actually rename the um, file for us So I'm going to call this ellipse renderer and we'll say okay And I'll quickly need to save that and we should see if we go back to Unity is that we do in fact have it here now note that there is this um, Issue that there's a meta file for it um, that shouldn't be that big of an issue for us. However, we do want to also double check that the ellipse here, and you do notice that, yeah, that did become, um, it did lose the connection to that script. Usually what you can do to fix that is simply just go over, either click here or um, drag and drop the class asset back in. Let's just click it here. So yeah, we've got it appears right here. Click that and everything comes back for us. Um, it is possible depending on how you do things that you might lose that information, just need to kind of repopulate it. Uh, we can still stick with a five and three and 23 there. That's all fine for right now. Um, we'll save our project and now I'm gonna create a new c -sharp script and call this ellipse. And this is gonna be our actual ellipse class now. So I'm gonna open that up in MonoDevelop. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna delete all of the information up here. We no longer need any of this. And I'm going to get rid of this mono behavior inheritance as well. This is actually just going to be kind of a data class for us. It's not going to um, store, or it's not going to need any of the um, Unity functionality in that respect. I am going to, however, add a system.serializable attribute up here. And that is so that when we have an ellipse in our inspector, say for example our ellipse renderer may eventually kind of use this ellipse class, we'll be able to actually populate the public fields rather than having to um, do it solely in code. So here what we're going to do is we're going to add in two public um, variables. The first one is going to be a public float called x-axis, and the second is a public float y-axis and these are basically the same thing as the as the axes that we had in the renderer um, I'm also going to right now we're just going to be able to obviously edit this in the inspector but there may be a situation where you're actually creating this class in code and you want to be able to populate its information straight away and so I'm going to create a public constructor for this as well so we're going to say public ellipse float x-axis x-axis float y-axis and then we'll simply set our x-axis equal to the parameter and likewise the y-axis 
equal to its associated parameter. So now if you do find yourself in a situation where you're creating one in code, you can simply get that here. Now the other thing that we want this class to do is to be able to put in that value between 0 and 1, or really technically any value, but it'll ultimately evaluate between 0 and 1, um, and get the proper kind of vector position for that point along the ellipse. Now I know I had mentioned returning a vector 3 in the um, slides before. I think I'm actually going to do a vector 2 because ultimately we're just dealing with this x and y position. And in actuality, when we move into 3D space to create like our space scene where we have planets going, it's actually gonna be on the X and Z axes. And it's a little bit easier, I find, to just bring in a vector two with the two, two values you want and then kind of place them within the vector three rather than having to rearrange a vector three on the fly. So with all that said, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a public method that returns a vector two. And I'm gonna call this evaluate. And it's gonna take in one parameter called float T and we are going to take this now. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of do what we did in our ellipse renderer here, where we're calculating all of this information, but we're going to put it into um, this method instead. So float t kind of represents, like, like I say, we've already figured out how far along we are along the ellipse. So we, don't, we no longer need to do what we did here where we were kind of calculating based on number of segments and dividing things. Let's jump back over to the ellipse script. So instead, all we need to do here is say float angle equals mathf degrees to radians. We'll multiply that by the 360 degrees and by that t value. So these here gives us like kind of the degrees of however far we are. If we're halfway along, it'll be 180 because it's 360 times half. And then we convert that to radians. Next, we'll create an x position, float x, which is going to be mathf.sign of that angle value. And we'll multiply that by our x axis. And then float y, mathf.cosine angle times the y-axis. And then finally, all we need to do is return this new vector 2 of values x and y. And that's really it. This now creates this ellipse class for us. We can see how this would work if we want to create this and put this into our um, ellipse renderer here. So how we would convert this ellipse renderer now is instead of putting in these two separate values of the x-axis and the y-axis, we can simply have a public ellipse. We can just call that um, call that ellipse, really. And that's now going to be this public value um, that will contain both of those axis information. Now, obviously, down here, we're going to have to kind of adjust this a bit. So instead of actually having to go through all of this now, we can simply use um, the evaluate method that we have to get this point instead. So I'm going to keep this right here because we're actually going to want this is kind of that value t for us because it's how far we are along the number of segments. So I'm going to keep this and I'm actually going to copy that. Um, and But instead of kind of creating a new vector 3 here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a vector 2 called, um, we'll call this position, we'll call this position 2D, so that we know that this is the position, but it's only in that x and y value. And that's going to be equal to ellipse.evaluate, and then all we need to pass into this is that t value, so all we need to pass in right now is this float i uh, divided by float segments. We no longer need any of this. I was really just keeping that there to keep this intact. But what that will do, uh, and I have one too many parentheses here, um, what that does now is this gives us that x and y position that we need along, as, as we are currently along the ellipse. So now what we can simply do is down here we can say points i is equal to that position 2d dot x and position 2d dot y. Now, if you're familiar with Unity, you know that you could actually just 
dump this vector 2 right into here and Unity would handle it okay. Um, the reason that I am doing it this way though is like I said, once we get to 3D space and we're going to want to be working on the XZ plane, I'm actually going to swap these two positions. And so um, that's why I'm kind of going through this a little bit more um, step by step. But all of that gets us exactly what we need. We've kind of cut this down by a couple of lines here. Um, we're getting all the information right through this evaluate because we're storing it in the ellipse. So we can now save this and that should cover everything there for us. So we can go back to Unity and if I go to our ellipse um, object that we have, we see now that instead of that x and y axis, we have this ellipse here. And so I can create a, uh, I can put this as a 5 and 3 for the axes here. And we should see now um, that this works just as it did before where I'm going to hit play. And sure enough, it renders it. But now, like I say, instead of rendering each thing within the ellipse renderer class, it's actually getting that information directly from the ellipse itself. Um, so with that, we're going to be really be um, able to easily get those positions for our planets in our next video when we kind of set up a little mini solar system in Unity and um, really make use of the ellipses that we've been learning about. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, just a quick little addendum to this video. I noticed that there was this um, error coming up when I started my game, um, saying that there was an object reference that's not set. And the reason for that is if we jump into Unity here, we see right here um, that there is this check for a line renderer. And what's happening is that that's getting done right when we start our scene because of this on validate check. Um, and it's looking for that before the awake function actually sets LR. So therefore, when it gets to here, it's not finding it and it's throwing that error. Uh, we can solve this really easily simply by double checking that LR has been set. So right in here, we're going to say if the application is playing and LR does not equal null. And that will just say so that if LR is null, like that very first moment of the game, uh, we can skip this and we're not going to throw that error. It's certainly nothing game breaking at this point, but something that we, you know, doesn't hurt to have that check in there just so that you prevent issues later down the road. Now, if I stop this and hit um, play again, we should see that it um, starts running without that error. So that was all there. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.